All right, so welcome back everybody to another Xamarin University guest lecture. Uh, we are happy to welcome back Jeffrey Huntley, who uh, has done this fast lane lecture before, but we had a little bit of uh, recording problems. So he was gracious enough to uh, offer to do this again. Uh, so right now it's just uh, Jeff and myself, but we're going to go through and we're going to learn a lot about fast lane, which is just an amazing open source, well, a collection of projects really, that are going to really help iOS and Android development and automate uh, the, the whole process of the getting your app out to the different app stores. All right, so Jeff, let's uh, let's talk about Fastlane. Yeah, thanks, Rob. All right, so today we're going to be talking about a tool called Fastlane, but we're not just going to be talking. We're going to be get really deep and involved with the actual tool. Um, I've created something on GitHub. If you go to github.com slash ghuntley, there's a repository called App Store Automation with Fastlane. Now, what's interesting about here is what we go through today and going through uh, as we step through and break down what is Fastlane, um, it's all here. Uh, it's not just a presentation and lecture. This is something you can take and implement tomorrow or even straight after a lecture um, within your project and you increase the productivity and just solve a lot of pain points. Um, so that's on GitHub, App Store Automation with Fastlane. Um, so at the review, um, let's look at Fastlane. So Fastlane was uh, created by a couple of developers in the Twitter team. It's a collection of tools that solve common problems that mobile developers have. It's uh, not actually a Xamarin, um, it's actually not something from the Xamarin ecosystem. Uh, it focuses on automation of iOS, uh, iTunes Connect, and the Google Play App Store. So typically if you go outside of the Xamarin ecosystem, you'll actually find a lot of people are talking about Fastlane. So this is just the introduction of Fastlane to the Xamarin ecosystem. So um, they claim to have uh, 5 million developer hours saved in the last 16 months, and I will truly believe it. Um, we'll be running through uh, a few different tools today. Um, Fastlane is a collection of uh, utilities. Um, one of those utilities is a thing called Match. So first thing we'll be going through now is um, what is Match? Um, so Match is a utility for managing iOS certificates, iOS developer certificates. This is a common pain point for mobile development. If you're hiring mobile developers, um, you continually have to provision iTunes uh, credentials to them so they can create their developer certificate, then you update the mobile provisioning profile. It's just amazing. It's just a massive time suck. Um, and if you've got a large team of mobile developers, 50 mobile developers, you, you're always going to have people joining the team and people leaving the team. And managing this thing, it, it's just absolute pain. So on every single Apple developer's computer inside your keychain, there is uh, typically a distribution and a developer certificate. The way most mobile shops are not using Fastlane, they generate one certificate per mobile developer. But uh, shops that are using Fastlane, they actually share that certificate uh, between all their developers and they actually store the certificates um, under source control, so following best DevOps principles. And it, it's actually really cool um, because if you were to have a, say, let's say you have a security incident, you can actually, let's say you would have a security incident for example, here is um, my production Apple developer certificates and currently this repository is private, but let's simulate a security incident. I'm going to make these public. You're a brave man. All right. 
Yeah, so this is, these are my production iOS developer certificates and um, I have accidentally made them publicly available on the internet. So I've got a, as a tech lead, I've got a team of 50 mobile developers and oh no, uh, I need to rotate my certificates. Um, I need to log into iTunes Connect. Um, uh, so the Apple developer portal, I have to revoke the provisioning certificates. I have to uh, provoke, uh, uh, revoke the developer certificates and distribution certificates. Uh, and then I have to tell uh, each one of my 50 mobile developers to log back in and uh, regenerate a new certificate. Um, that's bad. Security incidents do happen, but under that under that scenario where everyone's running their own certificate, everyone's running their own certificate, rotating those certificates is a pain in the ass. Um, it results in days of of downtime and productivity losses. So um, that's kind of covers scenarios of like why Fastlane's pretty cool, but I haven't really shown you it. So. Fastlane is a command line utility. Um, it uh, has a, it's controlled by a text file, and inside that text file, it uh, specifies a Git repository. And um, when you run Fastlane match, it actually will log into iTunes Connect, see if there's a certificate within the Git repository that mat, uh, and compare that to iTunes Connect to the Git repository. And if something's missing, it will um, either, with your express permission, generate a new certificate in iTunes Connect and then store it in that into Git, or it will retrieve the certificate from Git and um, and install it on the local computer. So, I'll show you what this looks like. So as we go through today, every command is going to start with Fastlane, and it's got a verb. In this case, we're running the match verb. It's looking at a configuration file, and the configuration file is saying the destination of the uh, iOS certificates. This handles provisioning profiles, dev certificates, all the way up into, uh, you can also use for push certificates as well. And what's interesting is, it's found a match for the provisioning profile on my local computer, so it's had to do nothing, which is great. But if I was um, a brand new developer and I just joined the team or a brand, I've just got a brand new computer, running match would log into uh, the Git repository, install the certificate, and it would be up and running. Now, one of the things when I um, made the certificates public, um, I did it with knowing that they was protected in, in some way. Um, the certificates are actually stored in Git. They're actually encrypted. Uh, so what happens is um, if someone was to get access to this Git repository, uh, it's not really useful unless you had the, the password that encrypted the certificate. So it's just like SSH keys. Um, in your team of mobile developers, you will share that uh, that key. You store it in like LastPass Enterprise, um, and if you ever need to rotate, you just uh, destroy the old key and then regenerate. So one of the things with uh, Fast uh, with Match is this uh, scary command called Nuke. So in the case of In the case of a security incident, this one line here will actually log into iTunes Connect, look at the Git repository, and delete uh, the certificates. It's, um, it seems interesting and scary at first, but this is probably the one thing, if you could, out of the, coming out of this lecture, implement within your client or customer, is uh, Fastlane Match. It will solve all your certificate and distribution signing issues. Like it's it's beautiful. So um, I could blow away the certificates, but I'm not going to because I don't want to tempt the demo gods. But it's there. So so Match then is 
uh, just kind of automating the process of sharing these certificates, right? It's not actually creating your certificate certificates for you. Is that correct? Well, Match, in, in essence, when it's up and running is exactly that. It's for sharing the certificates, but it also can generate the certificates. As you transition to automating uh, the sharing of these certificates and the distribution of the certificates, there's a command to match generate, and at the same time, there's a command for match uh, nuke. And the Fastlane team, this is such a problem in the Apple development community, uh, the Fastlane team has actually made a specific landing site advertising match. It's called codesigning.guide, and it explains the value proposition of what it solves, and it just, it's just beautiful. So if you can do only one thing after this, I would definitely recommend getting Match set up and running. Yeah, that's great. So for all the Xamarin University students who might have taken any of our uh, 220 classes, like iOS 220, Android 220, iOS 220 by itself could be a two-hour class where we show how to go through uh, iTunes Connect and we show how to use the Apple Developer Portal to create your certificates and this is doing it in one line, which is really cool. Exactly. And uh, the beautiful thing is it's the same process for onboarding a new employee, same process for revoking or recycling certificates under security, uh, same process for running it on CI. So that includes installing these certificates on your CI host. Or just, so beautiful. Or just the same developer who has multiple computers. Or if you get a new computer, right? Uh, so if yeah. I, I know I, I have like three or four different computers and I need these certificates on all of them. So this would yeah. help out uh, coordinating all that. Uh, yeah, and likewise myself, uh, I work as a consultant freelancer and uh, this is one way I, I, I can actually switch my identities or who, who I'm building for in an easy and centralized way. Um, You'll see outside of the Xamarin or mobile ecosystem, there are things like uh, Node version manager. So this is kind of like almost like Node version management for developer certificates. So I'll show you how this all works. It's literally like four or five lines of code. It's not even code. It's a, it's a YAML definition. So within the file system. Um, in that Git repository, you'll see a Fastlane directory, a file called match file, and that just configures uh, all how it configures the behavior, how match will behave. You can do it in Firebase, or you can do environment variable if you're doing CI, or you can just do it on a command line. It's all up to you. Highly recommend setting it up. All right, so uh, with match out of the way. The next thing I want to move on and show you is Fastlane itself. So Fastlane is actually a collection of utilities and um, Match is just a small part of that. And um, it's actually written in Ruby. And uh, when I was looking at uh, doing this lecture, I was trying to decide the line in the sand and do I... Uh, re-implement uh, Fastlane in C Sharp, or do I just embrace the fact that it's a well-supported external thing, it's, it's very much standard outside the ecosystem. And um, one of the things I just came to realize, just thinking about, it's better to let, let Fastlane be Fastlane, and if you want to compile a Xamarin application, um, hand over to something that's, uh, that's designed for compiling a Xamarin application, so MS Build. Uh, so throughout the lecture, you'll see uh, Fastlane, and you'll also see me using Cake Build. So the line in the sand uh, when I was designing this was let Fastlane do what Fastlane does, which is App Store automation, and let Cake do what Cake does best, and that's for uh, building Xamarin applications. So. Without further ado, let's have a look at Fastlane. So, within the file system, you see a directory called Fastlane and a fast file. It's just standard Ruby, and it's uh, has uh, a series of uh, lanes defined. 
And these lanes are kind of like build steps. And there's build steps for deploying to iTunes Connect. Uh, there's build steps for uh, Google Play. Um, but when, it, when you finally all piece it together, it's all accessible by a command line called Fastlane. So uh, the, f the first lane I've, I've got configured with Fastlane is just something really small. It's just change log. It's actually not built into Fastlane. It's something I've written uh, because it's just idiomatic Ruby. And it's actually really cool. Because um, what this actually does is it has a look at your current branch and then it compares all the changes that have taken place since the last time you've tagged in the uh, tagged uh, release. So uh, uh, you'll notice, I haven't really covered this yet, but I have multiple branches here using standard Git flow. So so if I was in the develop branch and I've made a change, I'm generating a build for, uh, the, I'm generating a build for the, uh, like a, a, a QA or development hot release. Um, I can run, uh, one, the first part of the, uh, the build script when it kicks off Fastlane is changelog. And that will tell me all, everything that's happened on the develop branch compared to master branch. So it allows a release manager or anyone else to basically automatically generate release notes. It's nothing too special, but it, it makes a, it makes a large difference when you, you you put it all together in the grand scheme of things. All right. So you get back to the whole idea here of what we're trying to do is make the whole onerous process that can take hours when you're trying to release something make it a lot faster and make it uh, automated. Completely automated. So. The script is aware of which branch we're on. So the actual Fastlane configuration is when master, when release. So I encourage everyone to just go through and just read top to bottom. I won't bother pe uh, bore people with the full details of how it works. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's got branching logic. So it, it won't uh, ship a development build to the production iTunes Connect. So there's a whole whole bunch of safety guards that branch and flow the logic. But yeah, it's all about making the release process painless and easy. So next step of the build step is certificates, and that's just uh, running match. So we've covered that, won't go into it. And um, next one is build. So build, all build does, All Bill does is executes Cake. Um, we'll cover Cake in another lecture in the near future. Um, but it's a um, it's a DSL in C sharp that allows you to uh, compile uh, .NET applications, uh, including Xamarin mobile apps, and it handles a bunch of stuff like automatic automatically versioning a plist. So when we run this script, one of the things it'll be doing is it'll actually look at the plist file and it'll automatically update the short version string and the bundle version. And likewise, same for the Android manifest. So um, the versioning of the application onto the system is completely automatic. So if you generate a production build, you get a, a particular semver, but if you generate a build off the development branch, you get a different semver. Great. So, so this is a, a cake file, and this is, like you said, in C Sharp. Uh, you're going to be coming back soon and doing another guest lecture on cake so we can learn how to write these scripts uh, as well. But for those who are familiar with it, you know we've seen Ruby already in the Fastlane file, and now we have some C Sharp. Um, so C Sharp, this is doing the build and things like that. But for all the rest of the stuff, how much Ruby do you actually need to know in order to run Fastlane? Are people who are only C Sharp developers and never worked with Ruby, are they going to be able to run Fastlane? Are they going to be able to uh, make the necessary changes? Or is there a lot to it? So 
you can use Fastlane the individual utilities without knowing any Ruby at all via just via command line and environment variables and configuration files. Um, it's just when you want to glue together a series of lanes to achieve an automated task. So, one, I actually have uh, in the Fastlane and the directory it actually. Uh, generates an uh, actual tag for when we complete a build from Cake, it actually generates and pushes a, a beta tag. So the QA team has a way, a reference point of saying this version and then the developer team has got a, a way to go to that particular build and um, either regenerate it or uh, or release that, uh, release that particular build. But the amount of Ruby you need to know is not much, but uh, the fast lane, fast lane uh, fast file. If you want to start like gluing all these pieces together, you do need a little bit. But I've handled a lot of the knowledge for you. Uh, you any comp, any C sharp developer should be able to uh, take it, exactly what's here and just cut it up for their own needs. Right. So with with your repository and Fastlane itself has lots of different uh, sample Fastlane files as well, right? So um, I would think together with yours and Fastlane's, like you said, I think any developer should be able to, it might take a little bit of time, but should be able to read through and just change the variables and things like that that they need to in those files. So we shouldn't be worried about the Ruby and have that put us off from using Fastlane. Correct. And uh, it's, uh, it goes without saying you'd be doing your builds on a Mac machine um, because uh, it's pretty hard to generate iOS builds from a Windows machine headless. So uh, I make the assumption here that use this running completely end to end on Mac because it's the one target that can cross compile Android and iOS on a single machine. So um, here's an example. So this is the documentation for Fastlane, and it it shows all of the aliases or helpers that are available. And in this case, they've got a helper that will automatically download and install a particular version of Xcode. So if you you're bootstrapping a, a build host that's never had Xcode installed before, this will handle it all for you. Uh, but the documentation is really good. All right, um, so let's kick off a build. All right, so the, the lane for build kicks off the change log. So when you're looking at the logs, you see what's happened since the last release. It runs match to retrieve all the certificates uh, in case they're not installed on the local machine. And then it kicks off um, Cake. And uh, Cake, when reading a Cake file at the bottom, read it bottom to top. Don't read it top to bottom. Just read it in reverse order. So we've told it to run package, but package can't run until build is done. So we see what's in build, and build can't run until clean's done, and then uh, building Apple, building Android, and just a complete reverse order all the way up. So this is uh, kicked off, and it's doing, it's updated my Apple P list with my version information, and also automatically updated uh, the .NET assembly info, which is right here. So on the file system, that's a common assembly info, and that's automatically generated and automatically updated by the cake build script. So that's kicking off my compile, and we're done. So um, all Fastlane did here was invoke cake. I could have invoked it just like, just like this, and the contents of that is update new get, install cake, run cake. Now, so 
after Cake is done, one of the things it does is it copies a whole bunch of artifacts to the file system. And uh, I typically, when building a Xamarin application, I normally build a release and debug build of, for both platforms. Um, the reason I do both for both platforms is for Android, uh, debuggable is enabled, so I can connect ADB, and for release, uh, debuggable is disabled. Likewise, for iOS, I generate the release build is for ARM, and the debug build is for x64, so one can be used in a simulator, one can be used in a real device. You could also use that if you wanted to uh, upload to uh, test cloud or anything else where you're going to be doing UI tests, then iOS would need to be in debug mode, de uh, debug configuration, yeah. so that the, the Calabash server is enabled in there. So that's a great way to get both of them built at the same time with the exact same code and the only difference being the configuration uh, between them. Yeah, completely agree. It's, uh, I, I tend to, when doing Xamarin applications, don't actually look at one as being iOS, one as Android. I try to uh, treat them as a collective whole when it comes to a release. Um, that way it's just when you compile, you get a, a latest copy and you just choose whether you're going to use it or not. Um, and if you're going to be using Xamarin Test Cloud, one of the things you can do is you can use UI tests, and those UI tests can take screenshots, which uh, leads us into the next place. So um, the next the next thing that we have Fastlane. Is uh, a tool called Deliver. So what Deliver does is actually provides a command line utility to manage the metadata and screenshots of iTunes applications, which is kind of cool. Because over here, on the file system, we have a folder for Google Play and a folder for iTunes Connect. And within there, uh, split on a per language basis, is all the metadata or the name of the application. And as a quick, simple change to a text file and then committing that and then running will automatically log into both Google Play and iTunes Connect and update the stores with the metadata that's found in Git. So no longer do you get drift in configuration, you now have an authoritative source of truth, and that's what's in source control. Yeah, I think that's such a big thing, that last part you just said about it being in source control. I mean, how often do people uh, go into just iTunes Connect and change the description and they don't have any history? They don't have a way to roll back because it's not a text file usually. It's just editing a website you know, editing some values in the iTunes Connect website. So having it in these text files and having it in your source control and being able to, you know, do a diff on them and see a history and when did that change and that kind of thing is a huge uh, improvement over the way we do things normally. Yeah, no, I, com I completely agree, uh, Rob. Um, well, you say you're working on a, uh, you're at 1.0 right now and for the last, last uh, couple months, your, your team's been working away on a, a super squirrel release, and it's a 2.0. Um, you can actually make all the changes you need um, in your branch, so when you finally do press release, it's as simple as just pressing a button. That will not only upload, not only upload the artifacts for the actual application to the, to the App Store, it will also handle updating iTunes Connect with the new change log, uh, any information that you may not want released to the public before that moment in time. So, just looking at here, um, I've done something wrong, but this is a good opportunity to explore Fastlane. So, Fastlane itself is a collection of tools, but what those tools are, they essentially scrape the app stores, um, and because of that, it's really important to keep the Fastlane utility up to date. And that's just a simple case of 
install or update Fastlane. And um, what it does is it actually looks at GitHub for error messages that match what happened. So it, it, it's, it, if something does go wrong, it's actually really easy to actually troubleshoot what has gone wrong because they've got a deep integration with GitHub and their GitHub issues. So let me just have a look to see what I've, I've done wrong. Yeah, yeah, it's working now. All right, so this is my application. It's App Store Automation with, uh, with Fastlane, and it's just name is in iTunes Connect. So if I go in over here and change this to So the error previously before was I, I, I changed it to an app name that was in, in use by someone else in the world on the App Store. So the, the typical restrictions of uh, still exist. This is just a way of automatically interfacing with the App Store so you never have to log onto the website ever again. Now the, I reload. So yep. You're saying never have to log into the website again. Obviously, both Google and Apple change their sites all the time. Does Fastlane keep up to date with those? And like, how long does it take? Are you ever broken because Apple or Google updated? So um, if you look at the customer list of who uses Fastlane, it includes uh, Twitter, Facebook, Snapchat. If it's broken, it's fixed damn fast. It's not a small little thing. It's um, it, so. Yes, you get times when it is broken, uh, but it'll be fixed uh, fixed within 30, 30 minutes to 40 minutes. Someone's submitted a pull request to get it fixed, so uh, I, I don't have no issues taking it on as a dependency. Um, if I remember right, SoundCloud's also using it as well. Uh, off, here we go. Yeah, so within Fastlane, there's an examples repository. And there's some hints of who is using it. So even Wikipedia is using it. So it's mainstream enough that I would take it as a dependency and not have to worry about that type of stuff. So that's the, the metadata. That, that includes the application name, the descriptions, the keywords, uh, the support URL. It's all under version control for both iTunes Connect and Google Play. Um, the other thing that's really cool is screenshots. So you can also put your screenshots under version control as well. So um, yes, yeah, so let's say you were working on that super uh, secret squirrel update to your app. Uh, you could store under a, under a new branch and when that branch uh, hits master, the contents of that previous branch which would include the screenshots of your new application. Um, Fastlane will detect that, the actual fast file, and it will upload those screenshots to iTunes Connect and Google Play. At this stage though, the common thing that I get asked is like I want to automatically generate these screenshots. So Fastlane does have something to help with that. But unfortunately, not compatible in the Xamarin ecosystem at this stage. Here we go. So, there's two tools, one is Snapshot and one is Screen Grab. And these are uh, tools that automatically um, 
clean up the status bar so it's hidden, uh, take screenshots and then lay side by side for, for every single aspect ratio of a for an iPhone, for all the different makes and models, for iPhone, for iPad, um, it'll take screenshots and run through a series of automated tests and then output a uh, text file which you can review and then a, a human manually verifies it looks okay. As soon as you say it's okay, it will automatically upload them to the store. Now, uh, that's for the standard mobile ecosystem, but unfortunately this doesn't exist and it's not compatible with Xamarin because uh, the, they use a different unit testing framework. Um, but having said that, Xamarin does have the uh, UI test, the Xamarin UI test cloud, and you could you can pull off a similar type style of effect. Um, there's an open uh, feature request for the UI test uh, test cloud team to enable an API to download screenshots. So once that uh, feature request comes in, it'd be very easy just to adjust snapshot or this fast link configuration to tell it to retrieve a uh, debug build. Like grab this, run it on test cloud, go through and you'd have a separate set of tests just for generating your screenshots in a group and then you'd access the API to download that group and then you unzip the zip file and then you can upload that to Fastlane. But this is just all future territory. But yeah, it's just an example of some of the innovations happening outside the ecosystem. All right, so um, what I'll show you next is our uh, deploy. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to run deploy and that's going to kick off a new version to the App Store. Um, because I'm on the master branch, this is actually going to upload uh, the binaries to, to the App Store, but it won't actually automatically release it. You can actually change this configuration option to make it automatically release to the App Store or uh, if you want a human intervention, um, or you can make it just re re purely release to your uh, testers on test light. So while it's compiling, I'll show you uh, something that's pretty cool that I've got and one of the other insights of Fastlane. So the next tool of Fastlane is something called Boarding. Boarding is a little Heroku app. Heroku is a software as a service platform. And uh, what it does is it generates you a web page. And this web page, um, when you first do your deployment and creation, you can actually input the, uh, the App Store identifier from iTunes Connect. And this, uh, you can optionally secure it with a password. And uh, when and give this out to our customers or your beta testers. And what happens is, as soon as they um, put their details in here, it will automatically interact with iTunes Connect and register them as a tester for that application. So instead of the, the typical dance of having to ask someone for their, uh, for their details, create a tester, or this is now all automated. It's self-enrollment. So all you've got to do to get this running, just click that beautiful purple button. Put in your details, put in your iTunes Connect details, along with your bundle identifier. Your password. And it's uh, building the website right now. So 
So if I head over to fastlanelecture.heroku app, that's still doing the deploy. Hey, it's done. There we go. iTunes Connect. It's picked up the name of my application that I specified previously when I ran Fastlane Metadata and it's generated a landing page and uh, you could fill in your details here and you'd be automatically invited as a private tester for the application. So it's already it's something like Match. It's just saves so much time and productivity. And then alternatively you could also uh, create a custom probably cake I would assume um, script to actually deploy just a hockey app instead if you didn't want to use iTunes uh, Connect itself cool. and test flight. All right, so you could use yes. hockey app also. Correct. Um, there's a whole bunch of add-ins available for uh, Cake Build and one of those things is uh, you just add at the top of your Cake file uh, and that will uh, download cake.hockey app from NuGet and they'll upload your APK to Hockey App, so you don't have to use this. It's just it's just an option available. It's one of the things in your toolkit that you can do some pretty cool stuff with. Um, but if you're using iTunes Connect um, and with Test Flight, this is a, a splendid way to manage your testers. Does Fastlane have a way to do that with the Google Play? How Google Play has alpha, beta testing there as well? Yeah. It sure does. Uh, it, it handles uh, your alpha, uh, alpha, beta production uh, test slots and managing the testers. So let me just grab. So that was boarding. All right. So before we went on, went over and looked at that. We kicked off a build, and that build um, is complete. With Fastlane's run, it's done its thing. And one of the things it's done is it pu it's pushed a tag. Because I ran Fastlane on the production build, it's actually created a release tag on the list page. So for following uh, Git flow, and it's updated the the version number. In the application, so this version is now available on iTunes Connect and Google Play as soon as this finishes running. And in this case, it has. It's done. So it, it takes a little, little bit of time, as iTunes Connect does, to process uh, the build and uh, validate before it's available. So I'll pull up an old build from this morning. And I'll show you. There you go. So yeah, it automatically uploads to both Google Play and iTunes Connect. Now the next product, moving along, the next productivity enhancement I could show with you is testers, uh, internal testers. So we covered external. Within the Fastlane directory, you'll see a little file here called iTunes Connect Devices. It's just a, a plain text file, it's like a CSV. So if you've got internal testers um, within, uh, that, um, if you have internal devices um, within your organization, uh, if you just pull request this file and add uh, a new uh, unique des uh, the device identifier and description, uh, as soon as that merges and you run Fastlane, it will actually automatically update iTunes Connect with the internal testers um, and also update the provisioning profiles. Uh, typically, you'd have to do this manually. Uh, if someone, uh, let's say a director, wants to run the latest uh, developer build but he doesn't run it, wants to run it on Hockey App, he just wants to be run internally. Um, this is just a way of um, automatically configuring the provisioning and allowing and uh, uh, configuring that device as a developer uh, device. So this file there called iTunes Connect Devices, which is kind of cool.
There we go. So yeah, anything that was in that text file will get automatically registered as developer of a device within iTunes Connect. And uh, so that will actually run uh, developer and debug builds on that uh, particular device without having to go through the App Store or having to sign with an enterprise certificate. Uh, the next tool is a command called pilot. So um, pilot is a command line interface that allows you to uh, manually add or remove testers. Um, it's a little bit low, low level. It is, it's more that knowing that it exists, um, but I won't actually go into actually running how it works. Um, with that, um, I think we're at a point now where we can kind of wrap. Um, I really encourage people to go to the GitHub repository and just play. There is a lot of things in here that you can just, ideas, concepts, you can lift and put into your current project or client or customer and you'd be incredibly, so much more productive. It, it turns out uh, when releasing software is boring and automated, you release more often and typically that's with less defects. Well, that's awesome. So uh, thank you so much for that. And yeah, there's definitely a lot to take in there, but you have all these scripts there. Everybody, like like you said, everybody should go take a look at these and you know download them, fork it, tweak it, contribute back if you find other cool things. And there's lots of other examples out there as well. And then, as I mentioned, you're going to be coming back in just a couple of weeks and uh, talking more about Cake and how we can integrate that and how you can have that automate uh, the building process of your apps too. So I'm really looking forward to that as well. Yeah, I can't wait to come back. Um, we'll be covering uh, automatically building and versioning uh, libraries and applications. So um, got a lot to share there. So can't wait. Fantastic. So thank you again for uh, redoing this entire guest lecture again. And I'm sure we've got it recorded now, all set, and uh, I will be talking to you soon. Thank you, Rob. Thanks. Thank you.